NPR did an investigation of it uh, in January of this year. CIA confirms Ventura meeting occurred. Uh, also, uh, the Minneapolis uh, paper also confirmed it. And I have the quotes here. At first, they said, I don't recall any indication that the governor had a meeting with CIA agents. And, and then they went on to say, you know, we don't meet with state officials. Then they added, now that doesn't mean it didn't happen. And then others implied you were lying, but then they had to admit it. And then it has the quotes by the CIA uh, liaison officer saying, well, yes, we like to meet with uh, state officials, but we don't like to talk about it. Well, I felt it needed to be talked about because it, as what happened in this meeting when I went down there, and bear in mind now I'm the governor. And I was, I, uh, they were very cordial, they were very formal, they, they treated me with great respect, let me say that. But they summoned you. Yes. And, uh, so, you know, being ex-military, you kind of figure when your country summons you, you better go down and talk to them. You know, I didn't realize fully yet the power that I had as governor, it was all very new to me. So I went down into the bowels of the Capitol, and there were like 23 of them in a big half-moon circle around me. And you know what the scary thing, Alex, about it was? They were your neighbors. And what I mean by that is you saw an elderly woman that looked like the lady down the street that would sweep her walk off in the morning. You saw young people. You saw They were every race, creed, color, age you could imagine. And so, you know, knowing me, I'm a bit arrogant, so I said to them, I said, look, I said, uh, before I answer any of your questions, I said, I have a few questions of my own. And I, the first one I posed was, why are you here when your charter states you're not to be operational within the United States of America? And what did they say? Uh, they didn't really give me an answer. You know, they hemmed and hawed and talked around it. And then I said, now I want to go around the room and I want you to tell me your name and what you do. Well, I'm the governor. Half of them wouldn't tell me their names. Half of them wouldn't tell me what they did. That's incredible. They expect you to meet with them, but they won't even tell you their names. No. And, and, and so I looked at them and said, well, uh, you know, being that you're not being very cooperative with me, I'm going to find it a bit difficult to be cooperative with you. Amazing. And uh, then it turned out, here's how the story went. They, well, they stay there, back. Jesse Ventura. We got a break. We'll be right back after this quick break with Governor Jesse Ventura. He's got a new book out. They're trying to censor it. You need to get it. Jesse Ventura with Dick Russell. Don't start the revolution without me. Ladies and gentlemen, there is so much in this book. We'll never have time to cover it in an hour, but we're going to try. you got to get the book. Former Minnesota Governor Jesse Ventura, Navy veteran, Hollywood star, best-selling author, the new book, Don't Start a Revolution Without Me, Jesse Ventura. Quick segment, long segment coming up, plenty of time to talk to the governor. He's been gracious enough to give us a full hour today. Continuing with your CIA story, this is amazing. Uh, so you say to him, uh, I want to know what your name is. Uh, how did it end? Did you ever even find out why they were there? Uh, not really. I think it was kind of like a, uh, maybe like an interrogation for their students or whatever, or, or the, for their agents or whatever. I'm not really sure. But when I did go home that day, it troubled me a great deal. And so I called a friend of mine. Uh, I, I, I don't know if you've heard of Richard Marsenko. Oh, yes. The rogue warrior. He, uh, he, he's 32 years as a Navy SEAL. He created the controversial SEAL Team 6, the anti-terrorist unit in Red Cell and all that. And I figured if anybody would know, Dick would. So I called Dick out at Rogue Manor in Virginia, and I told him what had happened that day, and he kind of laughed at the other end. And I said, Dick, do you have any idea why they would do this? And he said, well, you know, I'm out of it now, and I'm out of touch with all that. But he said, I got a pretty good idea. And I said, well, give me yours, because I said, I'm lost as to why this happened. And Dick, and Dick was right when he said to me, they didn't see you coming. Because the CIA's job is to gather intelligence and then present what they predict is going to happen. And clearly they didn't see me winning in Minnesota. And I think they were very much concerned, is this a trend? Are there going to be more independent governors? That's what right. is happening here in the country of the United States, which is also interesting because the CIA is not to be operative within the United States according to their charter. They're supposed to only be outside the United States. But now in the name of anti-terror, 
they are trying to uh, basically set up offices in major U.S. cities, and that's even come out, though they haven't passed a law in Congress saying they can do it. So, well, let's remember this happened before 9-11. Absolutely. You so, know, 9-11 was a, was a couple years later. I got elected in 98 and took office in 99, so this was, you know, within about a month and a half when I first took office in the year 1999. Why do you think they tried to deny it at first? Uh, I don't know. Uh, well, you know them. Uh, they, they're not, they don't admit anything right away, you know. They only, when they're cornered, will they give you even a partial admittance to anything. And, uh, you know, that's the way they certainly operate, I would guess. Well, I have a sneaking suspicion they were trying to develop a relationship with you and then basically uh, try to handle you or see if they could co-opt you and see if you were amenable. But then they should have at least given you their fake cover names uh, and, and, and acted friendly. Uh, frankly, I'm not very impressed generally with their analysts and the things that they do. I mean, they are just now figuring out that the mainstream media is dying and the alternative media oh. is exploding. <laughs> well, probably because they have much more control over the mainstream media and didn't realize that the alternative media could rise up. But with the rise of the Internet and things like that, which they don't have full control of right now, uh, I could see that would be a great problem for them. The book also gets into your wife finding a bugging device. Well, yeah, it, it was very interesting because uh, if they came into my home, my actual home, now you've got the governor's residence, which you use on certain formal occasions, and you're certainly entitled to live there, but I chose not to. I mean, I'd use it for formal things, but I still maintained and had our horse ranch out in Maple Grove, Minnesota. But what they did is they came in and they installed a red phone which was, uh, I, I understood why. It was a phone where if it was merely knocked off the hook, the local police would respond and would be there immediately, even though I had a guard trailer out in front of my ranch and all that. It's done for security reasons. But what was interesting was the entire time that I was governor, we had phone troubles all the time in no. my private phone to where you'd hear a lot of clicking and a lot of this and that going on, and it got to the point where even my in-laws would call up and they would hear it. And uh, and that we laughingly would start saying, okay, don't say anything you don't want the world to know, <laughs> and, and, and all of that stuff. Well, to feeling. make the long story short, we did find a little bugging device after they came in and left my home. It was out on my deck, and I showed it to a friend of mine who worked for who worked for the telephone company, and he kind of raised his eyebrows. And I won't say his name, but he said, oh yeah, he said I used to have to put those things in periodically by government orders. And uh, the other thing was, after they removed the red phone, we sh we had real bad phone trouble. And when the actual phone company came out, they made the quote to us, we don't know what went on here, but we've never seen a setup like this. And it's all, <laughs> you know, totally crazy here when they tried to get me back onto my regular phone system. It's all in the book, Don't Start the Revolution Without Me. We haven't even scratched the service. We're going to get into Jesse Ventura's view on the police state, the Patriot Act, the war, President Bush. Is he going to run? for president or is he going to wait till this disaster is over and run in four years because whoever gets it now is going to be in deep trouble as the deep recession sets in uh, there is so much more coming up on the other side we'll fire out some websites to the governor as well